number 41. The half-life of a reaction of compound A to give compounds D and E is 8.50 minutes when the initial concentration of A is 0.150 molarity. How long will it take for the concentration to drop to 0.0300 molarity if the reaction is A, first order, with respect to A, or B, second order, with respect to A? Okay, seems like we have two questions here. We want to find out how long something will take for a specific concentration to drop to a certain amount, point, uh, point zero 0.03 molarity, if this reaction runs in a first order fashion and then in a second order fashion. Okay, so what I put up here already are your equations. There's two equations that you should know for first order reactions and for second order reactions. Now, I, I don't know if your teacher or professor will give them to you, and, you know, during your exam. That would be really nice of them. But if you had a professor and teacher like me uh, who said, whoa, somebody's having fun out there. Vroom, vroom. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, but if you had a teacher or professor like me, you know, where they said you have to memorize everything, I had to memorize them. So... Take some time, write it down, uh, just in case you need to actually memorize these for your uh, exam or quiz. But there are two different formulas if we're talking about first order kinetics and second order kinetics. The first equation is relating the half life, which is a t half. Anytime that you see a t half, it's half life. Um, and for a first order reaction, the half-life equation is 0.693 divided by K, which is the rate constant. So maybe I'll just put it down here. This is the rate constant. And there's a rate constant for both uh, half-order reactions, or not half-order, <laughs> half-life reactions. And for each one of these, there's a half-life, obviously. Half-life and half-life, beautiful. But now the only thing is that the second order reaction takes into consideration the initial concentration. So that's this guy. Maybe what I'll do is I'll put it over here. This is your initial concentration. For a first order reaction, if we just look at the formula, it does not matter what the initial concentration is. There is nothing that's going to change the half-life because it's only reliant on the K value, the rate constant. Now, if we come down here, we have two integrated rate law uh, formulas, one for first order, one for second order. And this is your general equation that will tell you a arbitrary amount of time, which is T, to go from an initial concentration, which is A0. So anytime that you see an A0, just like we had over here, this is your initial concentration down to a final concentration. You may be, you know, you can call this AT at a certain time, AF, it uh, doesn't matter, but this is your final, so final concentration. And then the same thing here, this is your final concentration. And then this is your initial. And it turns out that both of these have a uh, rate constant in them, right? Oh boy, someone's speeding again. Stop signs. What do we need them for? <laughs> Rate constant. Okay. And then the last unit is this arbitrary T. Now take, take into consideration that this is not T half. If we were talking about half-life, I would have to put a T, you know, a half here. But this is just talking about a time in which the initial concentration is going to drop down to your final. So the same thing over here. This is the time it's going to take for your initial concentration to drop down to your final. Now, that's essentially what the question's asking for. How long will it take? If they're asking you for how long, that's a certain amount of time. How long will it take for the concentration to drop to 0 0.0300 molarity? That's our final. Right? We want it to drop down to 0 0.0300 molarity. So for these, the final concentration, 
would be equal to 0 0.0300 molarity for both of these, right? But now, let's see. Well, they did say that we had an initial concentration of 0 0.150. So that's my starting, right? The initial concentration is 0 0.150 molarity. Same thing over here, 0 0.150 molarity. And now I know that I want to find out how long that's going to take to go from 0.15 to 0 0.03. So I'm searching for the time. But the idea here is that, huh, rate constant. Did they give me a rate constant? No. So the first thing I have to do is I have to find the rate constant. Well, what other formula do I know if we're doing a first order kinetic equation? Ah, I know the half-life formula and the half-life relates the half-life with the rate constant. Did they tell us a half-life? Yes, they did. First sentence, the half-life of this reaction is 8.50 minutes. So we know that for both of these, my half-life is going to be 8.50. The half-life is specifically the time it takes for 50% of your, uh, concent uh, your concentration to drop down by 2, essentially, dividing by 2. Okay. So let's find out that K value because that's the only unit that can get us into the other equation, right? That's the only unit for all of your uh, kinetics equations that relate between half-life and your integrated rate law. So let's go for it. We know, oh, there goes my voice. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. All right, 8.50 minutes, right? So 8.50. We'll do first order starting off. So 8.50 equals something over something. We have that standard value 0.693 divided by X. We can cross multiply, just solve, right? Here we go. 8.50 X equals 0 0.693 divide by 8.50 on both sides. And let's see what we get. Calc's out. Maybe I could just bring this maybe a little bit over this way. Maybe a little bit up. We'll see. 0. 0.693 divided by 8.5. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What's going on? Today is a day. Okay, there we go. So we have our K value to being equal to 0. 0.0815. Okay. That's the number that we're going to plug in here for. And now we can solve for T. So let's give it a shot. Maybe I'll just write it out down here. LN of 0 0.0300 equals negative. We now know the K value times by the time. The K value was 0 0.0815 and then we're going to plus ln of the initial 0 0.150. Okay, so I guess, pause the video if you need to. I'm just going to get rid of the top equation because we don't need it anymore. I just need a little bit more room. And bye bye I'm just going to pull this up. And here we go. So we'll do the components, right? ln of 0 0.030. So natural log of 0 0.03, okay? We get a negative value. Oh boy, there we go. Negative 3.507 equals negative 0.0815x plus, let's find out this ln value, ln of 0.15, okay? It's now a negative, so I could just make the whole thing negative negative 1.897, get x by itself. Now it's just coming down to calci time, right? And um, PEMDAS, oh yeah. So I'm just gonna take, I'm not gonna round, so I'm gonna take this value and I'm going to, let's see, I guess I'll minus a negative value because that's the same thing as a positive, right? just because I didn't want to, um, you know, take any of the numbers out of here. But you could have just put plus 1.897119985. That's fine. 
Calc will understand. And now we have negative 1.609 equals negative 0.0815x. Solve for x, which is the time. So I'm just going to divide on both sides by that negative value. So this divided by negative 0.0815. And there we go. So for this one, x equals 19.7. Now the units, keep in mind that we did solve for time. Always look at the time units that they gave you. The half-life time unit was in minutes. So if you started with minutes, you got to end in minutes. So if this was a first order equation, it would take 19.7 minutes for this concentration to drop down to 0.03 molarity. Now let's do the same thing to find out what it would be if it's the second order. Would it be the same? I don't know. Let's see. So we're going to start with that half-life again because um, we need to get that k value so that we could plug it in for the second equation. Remember that we want to solve for how long. That's the time. The only thing now is that we need that rate constant. So we're going to use this formula first. So same numbers as before. The half-life was 8.50 equals 1 over. Now we input the initial concentration, which was 0 0.150 times your k value, which we just say is x. Same thing, cross multiply, but now you just got that initial concentration to deal with. So let's see, one, this will equal one, and then maybe I'll clear this, but we'll just keep going. 8.5 times 0.15. Okay, and this is, maybe I'll pull this a little bit over. 1.275 times x. Divide by 1.275 on both sides. And now we have our k value, right? Which is the x value. So one divided by this answer is 0 0.784. That's good enough. And now that's the number that we're plugging in for this rate constant. So let's just set it up at the bottom and then we can get rid of the half-life on top. So 1 over, now we're going to use the second order equation. 1 over 0 0.0030. Nope, just kidding. I just need 1, 0. So that was a good catch on my part. 0, yeah, 1, 1, 0, right? 2 afterwards. Did I do... I hope I did one, one, zero. Let's see. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. We are good to go. So then 0 0.0300 zero zero equals the K value, which we just found out was 0 0.78 times the time, how long it's going to take, plus one over 0 0.150. So pause the video if you need to. I'm just going to erase the half-life uh, stuff going on here. Just because I need a little bit more room. Bye-bye. And now we can pull this all up and then we can solve. Okay. So here's my equation now. Let's solve for it. We could do 1 divided by 0 0.03. And we get 33.33 equals 0 0.78 times x plus 1 divided by 0 0.15. I get 6.667. We want to solve for x, so subtract the values. Let's see. This is going to be equal to 0 0.78x. And then I'll just take this value minus this value. Okay, we get 26.667. And then divide by 0 0.78. And then we'll get that time. This, whoop, this divided by 0 0.78. Yeah, and maybe what I'll do is I'll, 
I did include the four over here, so maybe what I'll do is I'll just say it was 0.74, just to make it a little bit more exact. So I'll pull that out. We'll just add that one more number. Let's see if it makes any difference. Shall we? So I'm going to do the same thing again, but then I'm just going to add that four in there. Let's see. Does it really do anything? Eh, not too much. So x equals, we'll say 34.0. And now, same thing. You used your time was in minutes, so this comes out in minutes as well. And if we notice, it really depends on what the kind of kinetics are, because in this case, it's going to take a little bit more than a half hour. It's going to take 34 minutes to drop down from 0.15 to 0 0.03 molarity. And for this one, it you cut the time, you know, almost almost by 15 minutes, where it's now just 20, right? 19.7 minutes to drop down from 0.15 to 0 0.03. But that's it. What'd you think? I hope this helps. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to helping you in more questions. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, bye-bye.